Welcome to my channel, Living Linux. In this video, I'm going to show you stable diffusion on the Raspberry Pi 4. And in this case, I'm running Fedora. And as you can see, this is also running with Wayland. So that means I'm using the Kuha screen recorder. And I've set it to 15 frames per second, so don't mind this clock. I don't know uh, if it's possible to hide it, but I'll just let it run uh, for the moment. So I have tested stable diffusion on the Racha ROC 5A and ROC 5B. And there I installed it with Debian and also with Brett OS, which is based on Arch. So first I'd like to explain that I have my Raspberry Pi 4 in a Flurk case. It's passively cooled and this whole aluminium block or the sides, um, it acts as a heatsink. So when I was running at 2 gigahertz overclocked and overvolted, um, the flirt case was not enough to get it cooled. And well, you can argue that if you're overclocking, then it's not a real surprise that uh, it can't keep up. So, but when I was running at the stock speed of 1.5 gigahertz, it did manage to generate an image. So if you want to run stable diffusion with a higher clock speed, then it's also advised to get some good cooling. So as I said, I already installed it on the Racha ROC 5A and the ROC 5B and this article from Nick Build, uh, it's also based on the ROC 5A and it's also for Debian, so you can just skip this step. Um, yeah, so for Debian based, it's sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade and with Fedora, it's a sudo DNF upgrade. Uh, you can just follow the instructions, um, but one of the challenges is this, well, you can perhaps call it a meta package, because it consists of multiple packages, and you can't just do sudo dnf install build essential, that won't work. So I found this article and I will also put all the links in the description of the video and here they say that you can install it like this with group install and then these two names. So you can just follow the instructions. Um, you do have to be aware that um, they do put the username in the directories. So you need to replace that with your own username. And in this article, yeah, here's the instruction to get uh, stable diffusion 1.5 but recently um, on extreme was updated and you can also use stable diffusion XL so um, this is the github site from the author Vito Plantamura and he wrote on extreme and you can also see the built instructions here it's written a little bit different 
Um, so here is the instruction to get stable diffusion XL. Uh, this didn't work for me, um, but what did work was sudo dnf install git dash lfs. Um, let's see if I can just. Perhaps if I still have that in my history. Mm. No, I don't know, but it, it, it should be just like this. And in my case, it will probably tell me it's already installed. And you have to keep in mind that uh, Stable Diffusion XL is around eight gigabytes. So now with the newer version, um, you get the option to uh, choose Stable Diffusion XL. And previously, there was only a switch for Raspberry Pi or Pi, but I think oh, it's where is it here? Yeah, nothing to do complete. So, um, so now they he made uh, two parameters one for Raspberry Pi and one for a Raspberry Pi 02. So that is called RPi Lomem. Uh, but for Raspberry Pi 4, you can use RPi. So now let's just see. So when you're in the right directory, you can start it like this. Um, so you need to add the parameter RPi for the Raspberry Pi 4. And if you want to use Stable Diffusion XL, you also have to add the XL parameter. Uh, so in my case, uh, I have the Stable Diffusion 1.5 in this directory and the stable diffusion XL uh, in this directory. When I downloaded it, it was a very long name. So I just abbreviated it to SDXL. And as he said, it's, um, well, it here it says 8.6 gigabytes. And of course, SD stable diffusion 1.5 is, uh, a lot smaller in this case 2.4 gigabytes now i'm not going to run it now because it takes <laughs> quite a long time on a raspberry pi 4 so by default it will put the results in this directory so the astronauts riding a horse on mars this was my first result doesn't really look like it's on mars um yeah limps that's yeah that can be problematic with stable diffusion um sometimes it helps just to try it again so in this case i just did the same command and this this looks better in my opinion uh, of course this one here looks a bit weird. This one, I think, well, it's perhaps a bit short, but it looks better. And here, perhaps we'll just say it's just hidden in the dust. Um, I don't think there's clouds on Mars, but at least it's uh, more red color. So yeah, it's going in the right direction. 
Now I also tried Stable Diffusion XL, but what I notice is that um, it's mostly just in black and white. Uh, it, this does have a slight hue of yellowish. Um, so I also saw this uh, phenomena that on the Racha Rock 5B uh, with 16 gigabytes of memory. Um, yeah, that with Stable Diffusion XL using on extreme that I got mostly black and white results. So it looks like that Stable Diffusion XL is not really stable yet, that it still needs some work to get uh, full color images. But um, I think it's, it's pretty impressive to see that you can actually run this on something as modest as a Raspberry Pi 4. So yeah, just to give you an impression of the time it takes, I took some screenshots. So Stable Diffusion 1.5, so without the XL parameter, um, let's just say it took around one hour um, because it's not just the diffusion steps, but it also needs to uh, interpret it, your prompts and then decode and save. Now with Stable Diffusion XL, uh, that took several hours. Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, not really sure what this number is, but uh, yeah, so I, I guess you have to uh, look at something like four to five hours, something like that. Uh, perhaps if you're running from an SSD, that, that might help speed things up a little bit, but don't expect any miracles from that. Um, so yeah, it's, um, in a way it's impressive to see that you can actually can get a result with Stable Diffusion XL, but it's a pity that you get uh, mostly black and white images. So perhaps when we get some updates of on extreme, or perhaps, I don't know if you can try, if it has to do something with the XNN pack. Um, yeah, but I think the results with Stable Diffusion 1.5 um, is acceptable. It's not great, but uh, again, for modest hardware like the Raspberry Pi 4, it's uh, nice to know that you can actually run it. So again, I will put all the links in the description of the video. Um, and yeah, uh, make sure you have some proper cooling for your Raspberry Pi 4. And I hope you'll have a lot of fun with Stable Diffusion on the Raspberry Pi 4.